Will you stand as you're able for our scripture lesson this morning? The reading today from Second Corinth or Thessalonians, excuse me, uh, select verses there. You may choose to follow along if you'd like. Hear these words. To this end, we always pray for you, asking that our God will make you worthy of his call and will fulfill by his power every good resolve and work of faith, so that the name of our Lord Jesus may be glorified in you and you in him, according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. As to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our being gathered together to him, we beg you, brothers and sisters, not to be quickly shaken in mind or alarmed, either by spirit or by word or by letter, as though from us, to the effect that the day of the Lord is already here. Finally, brothers and sisters, pray for us, so that the word of the Lord may spread rapidly and be glorified everywhere, just as as it is among you, and that we may be rescued from wicked and evil people, for not all have faith. But the Lord is faithful. He will strengthen you and guard you from the evil one. And we have confidence in the Lord concerning you that you are doing that you are doing and will go on doing the things that we command. May the Lord direct your hearts to the love of God and to the steadfastness of Christ. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. We continue our series of messages, the top ten letters of Paul, and we come to the book of 2 Thessalonians in which Paul prays for them, may the Lord direct your hearts to the love of God and to the steadfastness of Christ. What a wonderful prayer. Paul is letting the Thessalonians know, and we need to know today, that God desires to be the director of your life. God desires to provide the direction that you need each and every day and all along your journey. God is the God of directory assistance. And if we seek him out, we will find the guidance and direction that we need for our lives. You send directions in different ways. I've been raised in the country. I wasn't unfamiliar with the fact that in the country, directions sound differently than they do in the city, especially before the days of GPS. Uh, On my first circuit in Upshur County, out in the country, an older gentleman came out one day and he said, "Uh, Preacher, I'd like for you to come to see me sometime. I said, that'd be great. Uh, Where do you live? He said, well, you go down the Carter Road, and when the split rail fence stops and the barbed wire fence starts, there's a red maple tree right there, and right past the red maple tree, there's a left-hand turn. Turn left on that gravel road and go out that gravel way a piece, and you'll see a big oak tree. Now, there's several oak trees, but look for the big oak tree, and my farm road kind of skits off to the right there, and I'm up there a piece. (laughs) It's a little different than turn right on Virginia Avenue and left on Philadelphia, right? Directions, you have to know the types of fences, you have to know the kind of trees you're looking for, all sorts of things. Directions are given in different ways. God has a way of providing direction for our lives, and Paul reminds the Thessalonians of that in this, his second letter. How is it that God directs our path? What are the ways that God directs us. I've included an outline there. If you want to follow along, also will appear on your screen. First of all, God directs us when he calls us. The Apostle Paul says there, asking that our God will make you worthy of his call. Now that assumes that all of us have a call, and we do. God calls every one of us to be in relationship with Jesus Christ, and he also calls every one of us to be engaged in his work in the world. And through that call, God provides direction for our life. Even when we can't hear it, listen for the voice of God. Listen for the nudge of God's spirit. Wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord even when you cannot sense the direction. Listen for his call. It will come. A number of years ago, again, before Google Maps and all the GPS gadgets that we have now, any time I was going to Pittsburgh to visit a hospital there, I called a friend of mine who was from Pittsburgh, and I would ask him for direction so that I'd know where to go. Well, I needed to be up at one of the hospitals, and I, I, I put a call into his office. He hadn't called me back yet. I thought, I've got to get up there, so I went on up to Pittsburgh, and I was coming through. I came through the Fort Pitt tunnels, and you know how it is. You come through the Fort, Fort Pitt tunnels, and then kaboom, there's the city right in front of you with all of the lanes and the bridges sprouting off. 
Which way to the hospital? Well, fortunately, just in the nick of time, as I broke out of the tunnels, my little flip cell phone rings, and I, and I answered, and it's my friend, and he said, where are you? And I said, I'd already told him what hospital I was looking for. He said, where are you? I said, I just came through the Fort Pitt tunnels. He said, get in the right lane, get in the right lane. So I fight my way over to the, to the far right lane in order to continue to follow his directions. There's times when we're waiting, and we are called to wait. We wonder, will the call of God come? Will God provide for me the direction and guidance that I desperately so need? Yes, friends, he will. There may be a period of silence. There may be that period of waiting. But finally, the call comes. And those who wait upon the Lord renew their strength. They mount up with wings as eagles. Those who wait upon the Lord hear his call and receive finally the guidance and direction that they seek. His call is one way that God provides his directory assistance for our lives. Secondly, God calms us. Sometimes in the frenzied activity of the world and amidst all of the anxiety and confusion and chaos in which we live today, we need the word that Paul offers the Thessalonians. Did you hear that? He said, in chapter 2, verse 2, don't be quickly shaken in mind or alarmed. Don't be quickly shaken in mind or alarmed. It's easy to get quickly shaken today because of the circumstances we live. Maybe news that we receive that's not such good news. It's easy to get shaken and alarmed. And Lord comes, and one of the ways that he directs our path is he gives us calm. He gives us comfort amidst those times so that we can hear him more clearly. James Wall, a number of years ago, served a church in Philadelphia. He talks about the first time that his parents were coming to visit. His dad had never driven in a big city. He said he'd given his dad some directions. He was waiting on them to arrive. When about that time, the phone rings. He answered it. He said it sounded like his dad had, had run a marathon because he was out of breath. Hey, James, I can't do this, James. There's too many lanes. I, I think I'm lost. I think I took a wrong turn. I, I, and he's just this panic in his voice. He had pulled off, and he said, Dad, calm down. Tell me where you're at. Well, we're in a parking lot. What do you see? He began to describe the stores. And again, James Wall says, I said, Dad, just take some deep breaths. Let's just have a conversation. So he had 10 minutes of just normal conversation with his dad, and he began to calm down. And he said, now, Dad, I'm going to give you some directions. Now, the good news is you're only about six blocks from the house. So just listen to what I have to say. And since his dad had been calmed down, he was able to hear. I can't speak for you, but in my own journey, sometimes things get bustling and frenzied and I feel overwhelmed and I, I feel overly anxious. And I feel like it's those times when God says, Ken, just pull off the super highway of life here for a moment. Take some deep breaths. The Lord says, let's just have a conversation. And in his calming presence, I'm then better enabled to hear his word of direction and guidance. When God calms us, he's doing that in order to direct us and provide the directory assistance that we need for our journey. Third, God directs us when he covers us, when he covers us. Notice in chapter 3, verse 3, but the Lord is faithful. He will strengthen you and guard you, that word guard. He will cover you from the evil one. The provision and protection of God are sure signs that he is directing and guiding our path. He will protect our spirits from harm. He will provide for the needs that we have in life. When we feel like that we've failed or we've stumbled or we've missed the mark, when we look at our past and we have questions, God says, I've got you covered. When we look at our future and have anxiety, God says, I've got you covered. When you look at your present circumstance and you're uncertain in any way, God says, by his grace, notice he mentions it, the grace of our Lord in God in Jesus Christ. By his grace, he covers you. And that coverage of God, again, is a sure sign that God desires to direct your path in every way. He covers us. 
Some of you have heard me tell when I lived in Morgantown, there was a dairy mart nearby, I just needed some bread and milk. I ran down to the dairy mart to, to get those couple of items and I, as I approached the, uh, the register to check out, there was a little boy in front of me. He had several candy bars, kind of had his, his hands full of, of snacks, chips and you know, Cheetos and that sort of thing. And he, he laid all of these things down on the counter. And I was hoping it was going to be a quick trip, but I quickly learned it was not going to be a quick trip because the cashier rang up his amount, and then he reached in his one pocket, and he pulled out a bunch of change, and he laid it on the counter. He reached in his other pocket, he pulled out a bunch of change, and he laid it on the counter. There it was clattering over the counter. The cashier starts counting it out. And then she says to him, well, son, looks like you're about 35 cents short. He didn't miss a beat. He looked up at me and he said, mister, can you cover me? <laughs> How are you going to say no to that? The audacity and the courage and in the language, can you cover me? I don't know where he, he had been hanging out, right? But I covered him, of course, 35 cents. I laugh, I think about that often because, you know, truth is in my own life, there's times I've missed the mark, there's times I've failed, there's times... Because of just being tired, I feel like I've come up short. You come up short in life sometimes. And you look to the Lord. You say, Lord, can you cover me? And by his grace, revealed and manifest fully in his son, Jesus Christ, he's got you covered. So friends, that coverage should remind you that God's desire is to direct your path every day. He loves you so much. May the Lord direct your hearts to the love of God and the steadfastness of Christ. Finally, God directs us because he claims us. He claims us. I have confidence in the Lord concerning you that you are doing and will go on doing the things that we command. That is, this is who you are. Paul says to the Thessalonians, I have confidence that you'll live out your identity. You know what your identity is. I have confidence that you will live that out. Friends, our identity as children of God is there because God has claimed us. He's placed his claim upon us by sending his son, Jesus Christ, to show us his love. You are a child of the king. You are intended to live in relationship with the creator of the universe. What a humbling thought. The same God that created the universe desires a relationship with you, and that happens through the Lord Jesus Christ. What a claim. What a claim he's placed upon us. Even when we did not deserve it, God placed his claim upon us anyway. Friends, that should be a beacon that guides and directs our own living in our words, our attitudes, and actions. But, you know, also it should guide us as a church as we go forth to serve in the world. This claim that God has placed upon us needs to be shared, that good news shared with all people. I haven't been to a lot, but I've been to been several auctions. Some people are more experienced at going to auctions than I am. I remember some of the first ones I went to, I remember going to an estate auction once and I had bid and obtained a few little items. I was with a friend of mine, he had been to several auctions. I noticed at the end of the auction, this guy comes in with his truck and a big trailer, big uh, covered trailer on the back and he backs it in uh, towards where a lot of the items were still there. And I said, I don't remember him bidding on too many items, but he's got a big trailer. He says, well, here's what happens. He's the one that takes whatever no one else wants. Whatever no one else claims, he's made a bid on the lot. And so I thought to myself, well, it's kind of like batting cleanup. You know, he, he's the cleanup guy. Whatever no one else wanted, he took it. I was probably the only preacher maybe at the auction because I thought to myself, thank God that's the way my God is. The ones no one else wants, here comes God backing in his trailer load of grace and love. And he just pours it out extravagantly upon you and me. And he claims us anyway. In spite of the sin that may separate us from God or circumstances that may have left us far from God, he claims us. And we as the church should also be God-like in that way. Many times I've prayed and thought, Lord, just send us the people no one else wants. That'd be just fine. We'll tell them about the claim of God. 
offer it in the grace and love of Jesus Christ and pray that God would transform their lives. Friends, these are the ways that God provides the directory assistance that we desire, and the truth is, many, many in our world today looking for that same kind of direction. Will you receive the direction of God for your life? Will you share that word with another? As God provides his direction in calling us and calming us, in covering us and in claiming us. Thanks be to God for the blessed gift that he's offered us through his son, Jesus Christ. May the Lord direct your hearts to the love of God and the steadfastness of Christ. Amen.